this is Mrs. Rodriguez with Module 3, Lesson 4. Let's start with the warm-up. Select all expressions that are equivalent to negative 3.75 plus 2 times negative 4x plus 6.1 minus 3.25x. So let's go ahead and get our highlighter and see here how it says select all. That means there can be more than one answer. So we need to check to see if more than one of these is correct, okay? Anytime you see that, that means there's more than one answer. And then this word here, equivalent. If you don't remember, equivalent means the same or equal, okay? So how would I tackle this? Well, first I would try, um, combining like terms and seeing what we get. So let's go ahead and do that. We have negative 3.75 plus, and let's multiply that two through using the distributive property. So we're gonna do two times negative four and then two times 6.1. And we get negative eight X plus 12.2 minus 3.25 X. And then let's go through and see if so far we have anything that matches. So for A, there's a seven, I'm not seeing a seven anywhere, 8.1, nope, C, don't really see anything. And then we have B, B is 8.45, 8X, 3.25, okay. And then we have 11.25 and D. So I think we need to combine more like terms to see what we have. So let's see. This has an X and this has an X, so I can put those together. So I have negative 3.75 plus a negative, and if I were to add those together, I get negative 11.25X plus 12.2. Now I'm gonna go back and see if I have anything that matches. So A, no, C, no, B, no, but D, check it out. We have the negative 11.25, we have the positive 12.2, and the negative 3.75. So this is definitely one of them. Now, I could com continue combining like terms, and if I had um, 12.2 and negative 3.75, that would actually give me 8.45, minus 11.25x. And I don't really see that anywhere either. For A, they have a 7x, that's definitely not gonna work. C, 7.25x, no, because we either have a 3.25 and an 8x, but there's no seven, so those two don't work. And then B, we have the 8.45, the 8.45, so those definitely go together. And then we have this minus 8x, minus 3.25x. Well, here's the 8x part, and here's the minus 3.25x, so yes, this actually works. If we were to take this 11.25x, we could split it up into 8x and 3.25x. So B and D are our correct answers. Okay, moving on, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change colors on this one. So for example, a through D, what they want us to do is they want us to write each product as a sum. So this is more practice from yesterday. We have these expressions, these products, right? Product means multiplication, two things multiplied, the answer to a multiplication problem, so two things multiplied together. We have the two, we have the x plus five. And we're gonna use the distributive property to write it as a sum. So we're gonna distribute that two to the two x and the two to the five, okay? So we get two times x is two x and two times five is 10. So this is written as a product, this is written as a sum. So this is product and this is sum. Okay, let's do the next one. We have three times x and then three times y. So three times x is three x, 
plus 3 times y is 12. Do C and D on your own. Go ahead and pause the video. And then uh, when you're ready to check your answers, resume the video and see if you got them correct. Pause the video now. Hi, welcome back. Okay, so for C, you should have gotten 6x plus 6. And for D, it would have been 7x minus 21. Now, for E through H, these problems here, we have the sum and we want to write them as a product. So we want to write each sum as a product. We want to go backwards, okay? We want to go backwards. So for this, you'll have to remember the greatest common factor, okay? The GCF. So GCF. We have to find the greatest common factor for each one that we can pull out to create this into a product. So for the first one, we have the number 5 and we have the number 30. Well, 5 can be broken down as 1 times 5. That's it. So 30, we need to see, well, can we get 5 into 30? And we can 6 times. So that means the greatest common factor that we have is 5. So we have 5 times x plus 30. Anytime you have a small number and a big number, it's always good to see if the small number goes into the big number first because chances are it does, and that's your greatest common factor. Now, for 8x plus 8, it's obvious that they both have 8s, so we can pull one out. So this is going to be 8, and then inside we're going to have x plus 1. Now, keep in mind, you can always check your answers by um, doing the reverse and multiplying it that um, factor back out. So we could do this. 5 times x is 5x. It works. 5 times 30, that doesn't work. See? So I re just realized that I wrote the wrong thing here. Um, 5 times 6 is 30. So it's always good to check your answers. Okay, and we end up back where we started with 5x plus 30. So it's correct. For 8x plus 1, we can multiply it back out. See if we got it right. 8 times x is 8x. 8, 8 times 1 is 8. And yes, we get what we started with. That works too. Go ahead and pause the video. Um, do G and H on your own. And then resume the video when you're ready to check your answers. Pause the video now. Okay, welcome back. So for G, you should have gotten 3 times x minus 4 and 5 times 3x plus 4. Okay, now moving on. Rewrite the expressions as a product of two factors. So once again, we are going from the sum, right, and we want it as the product. Okay, so when we have this form, what we really have is some number plus some other times, you know, some other number, and we want it to find out our greatest common factor and factor it out. So we want to go from this to this. We want to look for the greatest common factor so we can factor it out. So for A, we have the numbers 72 and 8. Now remember, it's always uh, good to check to see if the smaller number divides evenly into the larger number first, because if it does, that is your greatest common factor. So in this case, we have eight. So we know that eight times one equals eight. So now I have to see, does eight go into 72 evenly? And it does nine times. So because of that, this is the greatest common factor that we can have, eight, right? So, um, because there's no other numbers bigger than 8 that can multiply to give you 8 for the first, oops, for the first one. Uh-oh. So that's how we know it's the greatest common factor. Okay, so 8. So if I were to factor that out, what times 8 gives us 72t? Well, we realize that 9, 8 times 9 is 72, so that just leaves us the t. Plus, what times 8 gives us 8? And that is 1. Remember, it's the leftovers, guys. The leftovers stay in the parentheses. So we end up with 8 times 9t plus 1. All right, moving on to the next one. We have the numbers 36 and 72. So remember, you always want to check to see if the smaller number goes in the larger one. So we have 36. It's the smaller one. Does 36 go into 72 evenly? And it does. 
So 36 times 2 is actually 72. So 36 will be our common factor, right? This is 36 times z. So it's all about the leftovers. We have a leftover z and a leftover 2. So that means when we pull out that 36 inside the parentheses, we're going to have the leftover z. And 36 times what gives us 72? And that would be 2. And this is our answer. Okay, so go ahead and continue. I'll do, uh, go ahead and continue. Pause the video. And um, when you're ready to check your answers, go ahead and resume your um, video to see if you got the answers correct. Pause the video now. Hey, welcome back. So for E, they both had a three in common. So it would have been three times R plus S. For B, they had 11 in column, co common, sorry. So you should have gotten 11 times 5a plus 1. And then for d, they have 3 in common. So you should have gotten 3 times 48q minus 5. Okay? So remember, first check to see if the smaller number goes into the larger number. Because if it does, that's your greatest common factor. And then you can always check to see if you got it correctly by going in the reverse. So don't forget, you can always check. In this case, 11 times 58, or I'm sorry, 11 times 5a is 55a, and then 11 times 1 would be plus 11. We get what we started with, so we know we did it correctly. All right, example two. Let the variable x and y stand for positive integers. Let 2x 12y and 8 represent the area of the three regions in the array. Determine the length and width of each rectangle if the width is the same for each rectangle. Okay, so they want us to determine the length and the width. So, if we were looking for a common factor, right, the greatest common factor, and we have 2 12 and 8. Now remember, it's a number that all three have in common. Well, the factors for 2 are just 2 and 1. There is no other. So that means our greatest common factor has to be 2. And sure enough, 2 goes into 12 and 2 goes into 4. Okay? Um, no other number would work because um, 2 doesn't have any other factors. So that means we could pull out a 2. So our two is going to get pulled out. That just leaves whatever's in the inside. So two times what gives us two x? That would be x. Two times what gives us 12 y? And that would be six y. And two times what gives us eight? And that would be four. Okay, so that's how we would do it. Think of this inside as the sum and then the outside is um, the product version. So, let me see if I can write that a little more clear. So we would have 2 times x plus 6y plus 4, and this is the product version of the expression. And then the inside would be the sum. Okay? Exercise 2. A, write the product and sum of the expressions being represented in the rectangular array. Okay, so once again, we have the product and sum. They want both. So the inside is going to be our sum, okay? And then the outside is going to be our product. So in that case, if the outside's our product, that means we have 2 times 12D plus 4E plus 3. And we know that's correct because if we multiply that 2 through, 2 times 12 is 24, 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 3 is 6. So it works. And this is going to be equal to the sum of the inside, which is 24d plus 8e plus 6. And remember, this is your product form, and this is the sum form. Okay? B, factor 48j plus 60k plus 24 by finding the greatest common factor of the terms. 
Okay, so we need the greatest common factor again. We have three numbers. Now, I said to always start with the smallest number. So we have 24. Does 24 go into 60? No, it doesn't. 24 goes into 48, but not 60, so that's not going to work. So, next step. What is the largest number that we think we can go? Well, for 24, the largest multiple, besides 24 and 1, um, is 2 and 12. So let's see, because 12 is pretty big, right? That's the largest multiple we could come up with. Let's see if 12 goes into 60. And it does, five times. So now it's just a question of 12 goes into 48. And it does, four times. So it turns out that our greatest common factor is going to be 12. Now we can go ahead and factor it out. So 12 comes out and we just have these leftovers, guys, the four, the five, and the two. So that means on the inside, we would have four J, right? Plus five K plus two. And we can always check our answers, don't forget, by multiplying it again and seeing if we got the same answer. And 12 times 4j is 48j, 12 times 5 is 60, so that's 60k, and 12 times 2 is 24. So yeah, it works out. This is our answer, okay? All right, moving on. For exercise three, it says for each expression, write each sum as a product of two factors. So let's go ahead and underline that. Emphasize the importance of the distributive property. Use various equivalent expressions to justify equivalency. So once again, we have the sum form and we wanna change it to the product form. So remember the sum form is you have some common factor, right? But you're just adding. And then the product form is when you factor out that common factor and turn it into a product. So they want it like this. This would be the product of two factors. So in part A, we have to see, well, what do they both have in common? We have two times three plus five times three. They both have threes. That's our common factor. So you have two plus five on the inside. Now it's a product of two factors. And we could multiply it through to see if we got the same thing. We would do three times two, um, which is the first, and then three times five, which is your second term. So yeah, it works. For part B, what's our common factor? Well, we have two plus five three times. So this is equal to three times two plus five. And there's our product of two terms, okay? For C, we have two times two plus five plus two plus five times two. So we could go ahead and write this as two times two plus, and we have um, two times five plus two, because we have this in common, oops, we have this in common and we have this in common. So in this case, it would be the same thing as four plus two times seven. We could think of it that way, if that makes it a, li a little easier for you. So two times two plus, oopsie, seven plus plus 10. Let's do it this way. Make it a little more easier to understand and follow. So 2 times 2, and then we have 5 plus 2, which is 7, plus 5 times 2, which is 10. Okay? Now, we could multiply those out and add them together, right? So let me go ahead and erase this. And we would have 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 7 plus 10, which is 17. So four plus 17, there's no product. That's not gonna work. So that's not gonna work. So we need to try something else. Well, I can do two times two, right? And that gives me a product of two that I can pull out. 
plus we have this seven plus 10, which is also um, no common factor. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, that's not gonna work either. So guys, sometimes it's just trial and error and trying to figure out what works. We know we have a product here and we know how we have a product there. And we have a two here and we have a two there. Left over on the inside, we'd have two times 10, right? We have two, we pull out a two and that gives us a two plus a five on the inside. And then we have this one, which is another five plus two. There we go. Now they both have five plus two in common. So we could actually pull that out and we would have two plus five, right? And what would be left over on the inside? Two plus one. And that is our common factor. All right. That one was a little tricky. Go ahead and solve the rest of the problems and um, pause the video. When you're ready to check your answers, go ahead and resume the video and see if you got the right thing. Go ahead and pause now. Hey, welcome back. So we have three and three. So you end up with three times x plus five. We have three x plus five, so that's gonna be three times x plus five. Um, for g, we have two threes, so that's gonna be three times x plus y. We have three x plus y's again, so that's gonna be three times x plus y. And then we have f and I. Now for F, I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite this without the parentheses. Okay. And then I'm going to combine like terms. So the 2X and the X can go together. That's 3X plus 5 plus 5 times 2. And then I could simplify that further by adding up my integers. So that's plus 5 plus 10, which would be 3X plus 15. And now I have three and 15. Well, the greatest common factor or the greatest factors for three would be one and three, and three definitely goes into 15. So we can pull three out and we get X plus five on the inside. Oops. And that's gonna be the answer for that one. For I, same thing, take off the parentheses, combine like terms, and you'll notice we have two threes, so we can pull a three out and we get three times x plus y. All right, example number three. A new miniature golf and arcade opened up in town. For convenient ordering, a play package is available to purchase. It includes two rounds of golf, 20 arcade tokens, and $3 off the regular price. There's a group of six friends purchasing this package. Let G represent the cost of the round of golf and let T represent the cost of a token. Write two different expressions that represent the total amount this group spent. So they basically want the sum and the product version, right? The, form, the sum form and the product form. So let's take a look at this. We have two rounds of golf. So that would be two rounds of golf and 20 arcade tokens, so they also purchased 20 arcade tokens, plus $3 off the regular price. So that would be $3 off, right, or minus three. And there were six friends, so this would be times six. We could then multiply that out to get the sum version, and we have 12G plus 120T minus 18. So for this six group of friends, they get two rounds of golf, 20 tokens, and $3 off, which ends up being 12 rounds of golf, 120 tokens, and minus $18 off the price for the whole group altogether. All right, exercise 
four. What is the opposite of negative six V plus one? So we have to remember that opposites mean opposite signs. So if I had a positive one, the opposite would be a negative one. So in this case, we have negative six V plus one. So the opposite would then be to take the negative of it, right? To do negative, negative six V plus one. That would be the opposite. Using the distributive property, write an equivalent expression for part A. So we have this negative, negative six V plus one, and they want us to use the distributive property to distribute that negative through. So what we need to remember is that negative is the same thing as a negative one. So we're gonna take that negative one and we're gonna multiply it with the first term and then with the second term. And two negatives make a positive and one times six V is just six V, so it's gonna be positive six V. And then a negative times a positive is a negative and one times one is one. Okay, so that would be our ex um, equivalent expression. Five, rewrite a minus a minus three b in standard form. Justify each step applying the rules of subtraction and the distributive property. So we have five a minus a minus three b. Now remember that this subtraction, when we subtract, we can add the opposite, okay? So go ahead and write that to the side. Um, you add the opposite when subtracting. Okay, so let's see how this is gonna work. If we have minus here, we can add the opposite. So this is gonna be 5a plus the opposite of a positive a, which is the negative a, plus the opposite of a negative 3b, which is a positive 3b. And now we can combine like terms. 5a plus a negative a is gonna give us 4a, and we don't have any other terms for 3b to combine with, um, so it's just gonna be 3b. 4a plus 3b. Expand each expression and collect like terms. So expand each, each expression, they want you to use the distributive property to once again multiply back in that factor that was factored out. So. This is gonna end up equaling negative three times two P minus, because we have a minus here, guys, negative three times three Q. Okay, a negative times a positive is a negative, so this gives us negative six P, and we have negative three times a positive three, so that's gonna give us negative nine Q. Remember, anytime you're subtracting, you add the opposite. So we have negative 6p plus the opposite of a negative 9q, which is gonna be a positive 9q. And we end up with negative 6p plus 9q. Go ahead and do B on your own, pause the video. When you're ready to check your answer, resume the video. Okay, go ahead and pause the video now. Welcome back. So once again, we're gonna add the opposite. Combine like terms, and you should have gotten negative 2a plus b. All right, so now it's the problem set. You have one and you have two. Go ahead and start working on those, and remember, if you have any questions, if there's, if you're still a little confused or you need extra help, whatever the case may be, you can always ask me during class or um, sign up for my office hours. I hope you have a great day. Bye.